All babies are naturally inquisitive, and from the moment they learn to move, they're always eager to experiment and explore. This enthusiasm to investigate and their eagerness to stray from safety often puts them at risk. All animals have natural boundaries, and whether these restrictions are enforced by nature, a parent, or a family member, they all illustrate the baby's wild bonds. A female leopard lies hidden in a dense thicket. Her two cubs, now six weeks old, have yet to venture out from the safety of the thick scrub that makes up their den. Here, danger is never far away. It's important that mum keeps watch and the kittens stay quiet. Not only is the tail a worthy opponent, it will also be a useful follow me device when the kittens are out with mum. As the first rays filter into the thicket, the kittens can sense that this is no ordinary day. They've been confined in the den for six weeks and now are restless and want to explore. The mother leopard checks if the coast is clear. The little female is keen to come out. Her brother's happy where he is. The mother signals the all clear. The female cub wastes no time. He's a little more cautious. She gets mum's full attention. Apart from affection, this rough cuddle is also a form of discipline. Mum enforcing her will on the kitten and warning her not to wander. He's missing quality time with mum. Which includes bath time with a tongue that's similar to a pot scour. just in case mum forgets he's there. He can stay indoors. But he's not getting out of bath time. An ominous call gets their attention. Enemy number one on the prowl. A signal from mum has the kittens scampering for cover. Hyenas are the leopard cub's biggest danger, and the mother leopard must be careful they don't discover the den and her precious hidden treasure. Baby vervet monkeys are also considered precious treasure by their parents. Vervets are social animals, and all the mums gather together in the nursery to compare notes.
This mom is reluctant to join the group and keeps her distance. Her baby is sick. Other monkeys are keen to come and look. She does not welcome casual visitors. Her baby stopped suckling days ago, and she can't get him to feed. Close by, the other mums, oblivious to her difficulty, are content to cuddle and play with their young ones. Her bond with her sick baby is strong. <laughs> Grooming among vervets serves two purposes. Not only is it an essential part of hygiene, it is also a vital component in bonding relationships. It can sometimes be a little rough as well. Grooming is also a group activity and one which the whole troop takes part in with enthusiasm. Babies learn from a young age the joys of a good group grooming session. The mother with the sick baby remains alone and takes no part in the troop activities. despite those who try and include her. <laughs> the troop can sense the mother's distress and are unsure how to react. The youngster will not suckle. Morning turns to afternoon. The baby is dead. The mother cannot accept this and continues to act as if nothing's happened. The rest of the troops stay away. She won't leave her baby and carries it on her chest where it's meant to be. Now she seeks sympathy from the rest of the vervets, her little one still held tightly. They feel her despair and move away. The bond between a mother and child is strong, and the relationship between a vervet mother and baby is no exception, perhaps even stronger. The fact that a vervet mother will sometimes hold on to her dead baby for months after its death is sure proof of the deep bond between mother and baby. These four-week-old jackals also depend on a close bond with their mother. The pups have only recently left the den for the first time. Their father left soon after they were conceived, and mother is the sole provider and protector.
The pups are on solids now, and mother must spend more time away from the den, scavenging to satisfy their growing appetite. She doesn't like to leave them alone, but already they are hungry, and she is forced to leave. She'll forage up to 10 kilometers from the den, returning at night, hopefully with dinner for her pups. Instinctively, they know to stay close to the den. Their survival depends on it. A jackal pup's number one enemy, the black eagle. This eagle is one of the many dangers for pups as small as these. So they need to stay alert and never far from their underground refuge. All it takes is one moment of distraction and the black eagle could pluck a pup off the ground. With the arrival of dusk, the temperature drops. Mom isn't back yet, and the pups are hungry. Their cries are in vain. The pups have never been left alone this long before. Dusk turns to night, and the female jackal is still not home. And the pups are faced with a more immediate danger than hunger. The young jackals wake up all alone. and very hungry. This is a whole new experience for them, and one they are not comfortable with. Hunger finally gets the better of them. Time to scavenge for themselves. An important lesson, jackals are carnivores, not vegetarian. Despite leaving no stone unturned, their success rate is low. At this stage, anything will do. Even something with more than four legs. Not much meat. But at this stage, it's better than nothing. Every last thread is wolfed down. By mid-morning, their mother still hasn't returned. The pups are now desperate. And the spider causes hiccups. Just when all seems lost, Mum returns. A distant call alerts the pups. Excited, they mob their mother, hunger momentarily forgotten by the joy of her return. Her tummy is full, and the yelping of the pups triggers her to regurgitate the bounty.
They demand seconds. And get it. The food from her stomach is only half chewed, and there is enough for the pups to gorge on. Those lucky enough to get a larger portion flee, not wanting to share. This time, the pups are lucky. Mum returned with enough food for all. It's not long before the loneliness and hunger are forgotten, and they can put their heads down, knowing that they have Mum to look out for them. White rhino calves are also very dependent on their bond with Mum. They are born in seclusion, and only after a few weeks will mother and calf break cover for the first time. His little three-week-old legs are already sturdy, and after hiding in dense bush up till now, it's time to meet the rest of the family. Mom is still a little protective, though. She is eager to resume a normal routine, which means days of endless grazing. He has things to see. Other rhinos to meet. Mum's equipped to deal with any unwanted attention. He's tired. His new legs have been working for too long. And while Mum grazes nearby, he decides to put his feet up. Another new sight, a starling, looking for insects and other juicy tidbits. The starling is worth investigating, but doesn't hold his attention for long. He's hungry. Mom just won't stand still. Here is something he's not met before. And a little one as well. Maybe it wants to play. But the little elephant is more cautious. And he can't understand why. Elephants like to dust. Rhinos don't. One of the first important lessons this little guy has learned is that rhinos, big or small, don't bond with other animals. Especially animals that are bigger than them. For a baby rhino, wild bonds is about first encounters with strange beasts, new experiences, and that first big step to independence. 
but that can wait till tomorrow. Up to now, the only other creature these lion cubs have had any contact with has been their mother. They leave the secluded den where they were born and spent the first six weeks of their lives. The mother lion leads them back to the pride where they'll meet their aunts and cousins who will also share in the responsibility of looking after them. The male prefers to remain above all the domestic duties. The little lions are now eager to meet the rest of the clan. The welcoming party is not that enthusiastic. The drought has been severe and food supplies low. More cubs to feed means more sacrifices. The pride has not had a successful hunt in five days, and now they have the added burden of new hungry cubs. When it comes to hunting, a lion has only a 30% success rate. A cub success rate is much higher. All it has to do is find a lactating female. Mother lionesses will often allow other cubs than their own to feed. The cubs will search out any mother with some milk to spare. The little male is not having much luck and is hungry. The leading cause of cub death is starvation. Although lions are social by nature, during periods of food shortage, cubs are expendable in the interests of the pride. They can be easily replaced when the food supply increases. His sister has found a willing milk donor, but one suckling cub using up her valuable energy resources is more than enough. Finally, an ant who lets them in. Or just too tired to care. She soon gets irritated. and leaves them high and very dry. No, that definitely won't work. It's a male. In desperation, they turn to mum. The lioness knows that if the pride cannot hunt successfully in the next few days, her cubs will die. Being the youngest, they will not be allowed to suckle. A banded mongoose cub must take great care when leaving the den. Fortunately, like the lion cubs, an adult leads the way. First on a mongoose's mind is food, and the cubs stay close to the grown-ups, hoping to get some pointers on foraging. For the little ones, this is the first time out, and a little bit daunting. The adults stay close, looking out for any danger. Youthful fun soon takes over, and the kittens resort to some rough and tumble. 
These guys are having so much fun, they don't notice the rest of the pack have moved away. Suddenly, they realize they are all alone. But not as alone as they would like to be. A puff adder is approaching. They have not yet been taught about snakes. A close encounter could be fatal. Their desperate cries reach only the deadly reptile. Time to go. There's only one direction, and that's away from the puff adder. The adults have discovered the kittens are missing and are on the lookout. Whether by instinct or by pure fear, the kittens scamper away from the puff adder and finally find their way back to the safety of mum. For the puff adder, the tables are about to be turned. Adult mongooses are a lot more formidable than the little ones. In the spirit of Kipling's Ricky Tikki Tarvi, mongooses welcome a chance to face up to this highly venomous reptile. As a mob, they come in from all directions. The kittens stay close, an important lesson on how to deal with dangerous snakes. While a mongoose is not totally immune to snake venom, it does have a high resistance to it and can survive an attack where most other mammals have no chance. They seem to enjoy the challenge and like to taunt the aggressor. Even the little ones join in. Not too close though. These babysitters closely watch over them. And as for the one who likes to stray, mum's got his number. The puff adder is an unwilling participant in a very important mongoose lesson. How to deal with poisonous snakes. And there's a lesson this puff adder will never forget. Pick on two little mongooses, and you pick on the whole family. The humble puff adder makes a quick getaway. Not only has the snake learned an important lesson about survival, so have the two little mongooses. If a little mongoose wants to grow into a bigger snake-fighting adult, it must understand where its boundaries are and ensure that these perimeters are only challenged when close to the protection of the family. But for now, these mongoose kittens are content to stay close to mum and their siblings and enjoy the safety of knowing that there is always someone watching over them. Now the little mongooses can stretch out and relax, safe within the bounds of their clan. 
Like the mongoose family, baboons also have a very strict clan structure, which is necessary when living close to a river and its inhabitants. Like all babies, the young baboons are inquisitive and their play takes them further and further away from the adults. The safety of these youngsters is the reason the sentry's job is so important. There's a reason it's called the Crocodile River. A simple thing like taking a drink must be done with care. And just like any playground near a busy street, if you're not extra careful, you could get run over. The new babies have never seen something so large before. And they're off, even before the sentry sounds the alarm. Which gets the rest of the troop moving. While an elephant doesn't pose a real threat to the baboons, it would be a disaster if a baby got caught underfoot. Or was playing in a tree he decides to push over. As the elephant passes through, the guard spots another threat. Vervet monkeys. Not exactly a physical threat, but definitely a territorial one. No self-respecting baboon will stand for this, and it's a call to arms encouraged by the screeching females. So young and already so much excitement. Pretty soon, the smaller primates are not only outnumbered, but have only one avenue of escape. The river. While the vervets are never really a threat to the baboons, they, like all primates, have an inherent love of babies, and a kidnapping is not out of the question. Once again, the baboons attempt to drink, keeping a sharp lookout for the most dangerous of all trespassers. He's also thirsty. And after a not so graceful dismount, heads to the water's edge for a drink. He's had first-hand experience just how dangerous drinking can be. They are taking no chances. This youngster is not sure what all the fuss is about. And while his younger brother watches, he is off to get himself a drink. He's not the only one who sees the little baboon head towards the wrong part of the river to drink. That's where he should be drinking, in the open. not where the visibility is poor, and predators can approach unseen. In just a few seconds, the troop has lost a baby and he's lost a brother and playmate.
For a baby baboon, even a simple thing like drinking can be fatal. And for those left behind, a very important lesson. Like the baboons, leopards also use trees for safety. These cubs' mother is calling them to join her. They are older now, and she's decided it's time for them to get a taste of real home-caught leopard cuisine, served in traditional leopard style. In fact, it's a real tree course meal. The little female makes a good start. The incentive is strong. She gets high enough for a nibble. But this cub's a natural-born climber and wants to go the whole hog. The little male has yet to make a start. But he's hungry, and the smell of fresh meat is irresistible. Mom urges him on. He decides it's worth the risk. His sister is waiting for no one, definitely not her brother. The cub just can't seem to get a grip. Mom knows he's struggling. But she also knows that this is something her cub must ultimately achieve without her help. He gets a little closer. At last, a nibble. But his sister has other ideas. She has no problem eating alone and carries on oblivious to his envious scrutiny. Technique's good. He's still getting no help from mum. Perhaps it's a vertigo problem. Now his sister's showing off. Getting down is a little trickier than up. Mom decides it's time to lend a hand. The carcass is not budging. And using climbing skills any primate would be proud of. Dinner is served. But as hungry as the little male is, discipline is tight and he must wait until he gets the go-ahead from mum. Permission granted. It's time to tuck in. The little male is determined to make up for lost time. 
The cubs have progressed from height to heights in quick time, and by testing their boundaries, are receiving just reward. For a pack of wild dogs, bonds are very clearly defined. Wild dog adults are perhaps the strictest parents in the animal kingdom, and their pups are trained well to follow mum. The dominant female is first out of the den. A quick check around, and she calls the pups out. The pups have been confined for the past three weeks, and only now, with their mother's permission, are allowed out. Now that the pups are old enough, she has decided to move them to another den. The move is a standard wild dog safety precaution. The den and surrounding area smell strongly from the pups and could attract predators. Using both vocal and tactile commands, the dominant female orders the pups to follow. In this crucial move, any dissent or bad behavior is dealt with swiftly. And that goes for anyone, even one of the older pack members who might question the female's authority. Suckling for a wild dog pup is a very quick affair, and up till now has only been within the confines of the den. Outside the den, it is done standing up, another new experience for the pups. Wild dog society is very structured, and the pups learn from an early age the do's and don'ts within its ranks. A bite on the jaw signals to the pup that he has no food for them. If persistent, a snarl will do. But wild dog pups have a secret weapon. By persistent yelping and begging for food, they can force an adult to disgorge and feed them. She can't help herself and sometimes only a bit of aggression will stop them. But if they persist and make the right noises, nothing can stop her disgorging again. While the pups are busy eating, she makes her getaway. This is his secret weapon, a snack to keep the pups busy. A yelp, and they eagerly move in. This is the first time they have seen an unregurgitated meal, and they are not sure what to do with it. Natural carnivore instinct soon takes over. If the adults don't let the pups feast, they'll squeal and force them to disgorge again. Usually, the adults move away and let the youngsters have their fill. But not always, and this is a valuable lesson for the pups in a competitive market. Wild dog pups are the only predators that normally have a regular breakfast and dinner. This is because the pack has a high rate of success on the hunt. Hunting aside, this has been a long day for the wild dog pups. They have crossed the all-important boundary, taking them from begging pups to competitive carnivores. Almost. 
The all-important boundaries can only be crossed if the bond between them and the rest of the pack is strong. Moving away from their den, the place they have been in since birth, signifies a whole new stage in their life, and one that announces the first stages of their independence. For now, hunting is the last thing on their mind. All they want is for the rest of the pack to let sleeping dogs lie. At last, the rains have broken the drought, and with the precious water, the arrival of the herds. The cubs can sense the relief of the pride, and once again, playtime can resume. As the normal day-to-day -day activities replace the lethargy of the drought, the effectiveness of the pride structure becomes evident. Lionesses with cubs form creches to care, protect and maximize the food resources available to their young. The females are also the keepers of discipline and do not hesitate to keep the cubs on a tight leash. Play fighting is something cubs do best. Not only does it strengthen muscles, it sharpens reflexes and develops fighting techniques. They're also having fun, a useful form of bonding. Always under the watchful gaze of the pride's female members. Play helps develop the techniques that adult lions employ in hunting. The females in a pride will often demonstrate a death hold, paralyzing bite on the spine, or the art of tripping up an opponent. They will watch as the cubs practice the moves. Then a practical demonstration. at high speed. Stalking, rushing, crashing, chasing, and pulling one another down from behind will all be used someday against prey. But in the end, like any mum, all they really want is to spoil the little ones with attention. And like all babies, what is better than being close with mum? The lion cubs bond with their mother is the safety net that protects them from danger. However, the bond between the adult lions is even stronger. It protects the cubs when times are good, but it also means that the adults will sacrifice their cubs if necessary to save themselves in times of hunger. But for now, the cubs are safe and the rest of the pride will ensure that they are nurtured and taught the lessons they need for survival. For all young animals, crossing the threshold from helpless youngsters to independent animals is a major achievement. These babies face many risks and obstacles, which cannot be avoided or overcome without the essential bond shared with a teacher or protector. It is these close bonds that lead our young and wild from the shackles of adolescence into the freedom of adulthood.